How's it going everybody? In this video, I'm gonna give you an update on all the two-way cases that I get asked about quite a lot, the California cases, all the way to Supreme Court two-way cases. So let's talk about these. But real quick before I jump into this video, if you believe in your fundamental right to keep and bear arms, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I wanna thank one of the new sponsors of the channel, which is Secure It. Secure It is a gun safe company that gives you guys a lot of options from some light options all the way to heavier safes as well. They have options like the uh, Agile safes, which I'm trying out and I really like as a kind of by the bedside kind of grab and go option so I don't have to get into my larger safe. So check them out. A lot of really awesome options for everybody's price range and thank you Secure It for sponsoring this channel. Also, I wanna let you know that this content is powered by the Farms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfpc.org to join the Second Amendment fight. Thank you again, Farms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, I'm just gonna run you guys through a lot of these major two-way cases in the state of California and also nationally that people ask me about pretty much daily. So first, let's take a look at the state of California and some Ninth Circuit cases. Probably the one I get asked the most about is Duncan v. Becerra or Duncan v. Bonta. Duncan v. Bonta is a challenge to the state of California's magazine capacity restrictions, and it is currently up before the Ninth Circuit en banc panel. And there have been oral arguments that have been heard on this case, and those were June 22nd of 2021. So as of right now, we are waiting for a decision from the Ninth Circuit en banc panel. And likely what's going to happen in my anticipation, along with a lot of other people's anticipation, is that the en banc panel will not rule in our favor, will not rule in favor of Second Amendment rights in the state of California. And likely this will have to find its way up to the Supreme Court. Also, one thing I wanna note is that the Ninth Circuit en banc panel might be kind of holding off on their decision right now because they may have concern about what the Supreme Court will do in the Corlett case, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And they might also be concerned about whether or not the Supreme Court will take up the A&J RPC case. So right now they could be kind of sitting on whether or not they're gonna issue their decision. But of course, once I get a determination in that, once there is a decision, I will definitely update you guys on that because that affects a lot of us here in the state of California in our Freedom Week magazines as well. The second case that I get asked about pretty much daily is the Miller v. Becerra slash Miller v. Bonta case, which deals with the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. As of right now, although there was a district court determination by Judge Benitez, the saint himself, that the California assault weapons ban violates the Second Amendment, he put a stay on his own order. Um, it was going to be effected for 30 days. Then an emergency stay was sought by the state of California that was granted. And even more so what actually happened is that they also issued a stay on that determination until there is a final determination in RUP. So Miller v. Becerra, the California assault weapons ban is on hold until Rupp v. Becerra is decided before the Ninth Circuit. So essentially Miller v. Becerra is waiting to go up to a three judge panel review, but is also waiting on Rupp v. Becerra, which is waiting on Duncan. So Rupp v. Becerra is another challenge to California's ban on so-called assault weapons. Well, what happened is there were uh, oral arguments before a three judge panel on October 8th of 2020. So there were oral arguments on that case and we were waiting to see what the three judge panel uh, would say in the Ninth Circuit on that specific case. Well, now that case, Rupp is on hold when Duncan went on bonk. So now Rupp is on hold for Duncan and Miller is on hold until Rupp, but Rupp is on hold for Duncan. So you can see how these things have dominoed and how everything is stalled out. Another case that has been stalled out, which people ask me quite frequently about, is the Rodi v. Becerra case, which is the Ammo Day case. So that had three judge panel oral arguments as well on November 9th of 2020. So oral arguments happened before the Ninth Circuit and three judge panel, and we were waiting for a determination in that. Well, then when Duncan went on bonk, that determination was also put on hold until Duncan is resolved. So you can see how in the Ninth Circuit, there is a huge backlog of cases based on Duncan. So people who are asking me pretty much daily about what about Rody, what about Miller, what about Rupp, what about all these cases? The fact is until we get something in Duncan, until the en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit issues their ruling in Duncan, all these other cases are gonna be backlogged and they're gonna be on hold. Now let's take a look at some other circuits. And first let's look at the Fourth Circuit's case, the 18 to 20 case, which is the Hirschfeld v. ATF case. And there a three judge panel in the Fourth Circuit actually found that the ban on individuals 18 to 20 from purchasing handguns from gun stores was indeed unconstitutional. That case is likely going to go on bonk and then we'll have to see how it plays out in the Fourth Circuit before an en banc panel. Another major case that I get asked about quite frequently is the Sixth Circuit determination on bump stocks in the GOA v. Garland case. In this case, a three judge panel in the Sixth Circuit said that the ban on bump stocks and the ATF's reinterpretation of the definition of machine gun to include things like bump stocks 
was unconstitutional and a violation of Second Amendment rights. So this was a big deal, especially because it dealt with the ATF's overreach, redefinition of items to include things like bump stocks into the definition of machine guns, similar to what they're trying to do with a lot of other things like the rare breed triggers, and also what they're trying to do with other redefinitions, like the redefinition of frames or receivers, and the redefinition of what an SBR is to include anything with a pistol brace. So it has huge implications on the overreach that the ATF engages in. And although there was a positive determination by a three judge panel in the Sixth Circuit, this case has gone on bonk. So there will be a rehearing in this case. And as of right now, my understanding is that oral arguments are set for October 20th of 2021. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. And also a good resource for all this that I just wanna note real quick is my friend over on um, Twitter, Rob Romano or 2A Updates. He has this case tracker that's absolutely amazing. So if you guys don't wanna watch videos and you just wanna look at some calendars and information, stuff like that, I highly recommend you guys go check out his Twitter page. Now, the last category of cases that people ask me about quite frequently are all these Supreme Court cases. So the first major one is the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Corlett case. This is a challenge to the state of New York's concealed carry permit scheme and whether or not self-defense is a good enough justification for someone to be issued a carry permit. So on April 26th of 2021, the Supreme Court did grant review of this case. And the question is whether the state's denial of petitioners' applications for concealed carry licenses for self-defense violated the Second Amendment. Now, an important update on this that wasn't on my last video um, that I did with all these two updates is that oral arguments have been set for this case and oral arguments are set for November 3rd of 2021. So on November 3rd, the Supreme Court will get together and will hear oral arguments on this major 2 a case that a lot of us are anticipating. Now, for other cases that are pending before the Supreme Court, this is going to be a category of cases that have been distributed for conference. The first is the Young v. Hawaii challenge to open carry. The question in Young is whether the Ninth Circuit erred in holding in direct conflict with the holdings of the First, Seventh, and DC circuits that the Second Amendment does not apply outside of the home at all. And also there is a question of whether the denial of petitioner's applications for a handgun carry license for self-defense violated the Second Amendment. So they are seeking a review of the Ninth Circuit's en banc panel determination. If you're not familiar with the en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit said in Young, it was essentially that under the Second Amendment, you do not have a fundamental right to carry a firearm out in public, either open or concealed. The next case is a &J RPC v. Graywall, and this is a challenge to the state of New Jersey's magazine ban. And the other case is Russell v. New Jersey, which is a challenge to the state of New Jersey's concealed carry permit scheme and the type of requirements that they have individuals have to meet before they're issued a permit, similar to the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Corlett case. So all three of these cases, Young, a &J RPC, and Russell, have been distributed for conference on September 27th. So on September 27th, the Supreme Court is going to get together and we'll have to determine if they're going to address any more of these two-way issues. Now at conference, there are a few things that the Supreme Court can do. They can hold the case if they just don't want to hear the case until Corlett is determined. They can grant the certs on any of these cases. They could deny cert on any of these cases. And then at that conference, they could also just push it out for another conference. So they don't have to necessarily address all these cases on that date. But as of right now, we know at least September 27th, that is kind of the starting date of when the Supreme Court is supposed to get together and determine whether or not they're going to address these cases or push it down the road or just outright deny them. So that's just a quick rundown of all the major 2A cases that I get asked about pretty much daily. I just wanted a resource that I could point everybody to in one video to say, hey, these are all the cases that everybody keeps asking me about. If you have any questions, here's a quick rundown. So if there's any major updates on any of these, I will definitely let you guys know, especially on any of these Supreme Court cases or any of these California cases. If something major happens, I will definitely let you guys know. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos, in this type of two-way news, and then it pushes it to more people so we can spread two-way news. Thank you to people like Chris Schneider who commented on the last video. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire, which of course is a Metallica reference. I really appreciate that. Thumbs up, thank you for that comment. And also if you guys don't have a comment in mind, just comment down below your comment to feel the algorithm. And of course, like Chris Schneider, if you have a comment that sticks out to me, I will incorporate it in the video. Also, if you're a new subscriber, comment down below that you're a new subscriber and I will make sure I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this is Built Barm Scholars. It's Nation We Maintain Barm Scholars.